what are your bold predictions for 2023? Uh, I'm still in the inflation was transitory camp. I think it's going to just go away in 2023. Really? Yeah. There's a lot of leading indicators. Now, we'll all know if uh, this is right or wrong in 2023 because a lot of the, the leading indicators like used car prices, home prices, um, shipping rates are collapsing. And if those go back to normal or what it was in like, say, 2019, whatever, and inflation is still high, then I'll know I was wrong. But if, you know, we'll, we'll know in 2023. And I think um, there's some signs that it'll go down. But again, there's so many variables there that it's not, there's no investing thesis behind that. Yeah. I think in, we did like one of these shows in, at the end of 2019. And my bold take was we would not see a greater than 25% maybe it was 30% decline for the next <laughs> decade. And that lasted like two months. Yeah. So what was, uh, let me be, let me be everyone's contra, whatever my bold take is, go ahead and bet the opposite for 2023. It was, uh, it was right before COVID. Yeah. And my roaring twenties coming out of COVID. That was totally wrong too. Had that take. That was, that was, uh, horrible there was a rebound in air travel i will say that there's some rebound in leisure travel so maybe i called that but well uh, uh you know the roaring 20s started after a huge uh deflationary period after a big inflationary period so um the roaring 20s didn't start really until 23 24 so okay. you, still, you know we still could be good remember there's that depression uh actually no one remembers this but <laughs> there was the depression <laughs> in 1921 which had a huge deflation so Hey, maybe that could happen. We could both be right. What a yeah, the uh what's gonna be the Florida land boom? Oh well Phoenix it, it already came and went, to be honest. Yeah, there the housing market could get rough if mortgage rates do not subside. It is going to get rough out there. What do you think the, will be the uh, next sick bubble? We've had some great ones. I think cannabis was really an insane one because yeah, twenty eighteen. I remember the day Tilray hit something bizarre, uh, some wild price. Um, I wonder if that's still around. But also, then we've had Metaverse. I don't know if that was Bubble. Web3, certainly yeah. Bubble. Yeah. NFTs. Web3, NFTs, crypto, non-Bitcoin crypto are all, we're all the same-ish. Uh, we have, I mean... Housing to some extent, potentially, sort of a micro. Yeah, bubble. yeah. I mean, it's not like, yeah, it's hard to look at that. I mean, prices have to come down, but it wasn't like a it, TBD, I guess, on that one. Yeah, yeah. There were some other bubbles. We're forgetting them, but they're there. There's usually like one a year. Oh, SaaS software, software, SaaS, the SaaS bubble. Oh, yeah, that was a blatant. I the SPAC bubble. SPAC bubble. Oh, electric vehicles. All right, Which what's next? Combo. I think, well, oh. this is really hard because <laughs> if you can predict it, then you can make a lot of money. So A large cap value bubble? I think. Again, I have no clue because I think maybe some sort of industrials sector where you get the reshoring ideas you get a lot of that the momentum gets you know looks strong on some of these companies earnings and they start getting priced at you know they're going to get priced at 30 times sales but they might get priced at some earnings multiples that are unsustainable i think that could be something because it's not going to be some of these bullshit bs things anymore or at least not for a long time it's right not, because we already I went through it's that not possible to have <laughs> one of those bubbles if the 10 years over four the the yeah but wait well let's look at what the 10 year was in 1999 let's see because i think interest rates are a little less important than people are making it out uh let's see i don't know uh what is it uh i got it i'm pulling it up 2000 no, wait. Okay, right at the bubble. Um, actually, we'll go the lower point. 
So the lowest the 10 year was in 1999, 98 range was 4.7% and hovered close to 6% for the majority of that bubble. All right. I guess the speculation is always possible, but I think it has to, it can't be rising. That That's true. Uh, at, at an aggressive rate like it is. Yeah. I guess maybe, you know, if things yeah normalize because yeah, that makes sense. I liked, uh, what's his name from Markel, Tom Gaynor. He like refers to interest rates. He makes the analogy of interest rates as like curfews and how you uh, like the zero interest rates is like no curfew, like bad things are bound to happen. That is true. That is true. But and people always had the idea with or, the earlier curfews. Yeah. And there's always that idea that I kind of like, I kind of believed where, you know, they'd say, well, you know, investors might not work out well, but all the money getting thrown at, all these ideas will be good for kind of just society and people in general as we get this, you know, maybe a consumer surplus and all these new ideas. And all we got was um, electric vehicle frauds and crypto frauds. So Sam Bankman Freed is good as yeah. an inspiration. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, we had I, that I'm sure. Go ahead. Go, no, 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 go for it. I said, I'm sure there's been lots of stuff that, you know, are going to actually generate, you know, positive, positive impact. Uh, it's not black and white, but again, I, I, I'm not, I think I'm against the, the low interest rates are good for innovation take anymore. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Um, okay. We just had that conversation with Paul Sarah, which will come out, <clears throat> what, a week and a half, maybe two weeks from uh, no, a week, a week from the podcast post. Yeah. And we we're talking about small businesses and it got me to looking on that biz buy sell site. And I was thinking, if you are going to buy a small business, what would you consider your circle of competence? Ooh. Cause then your your circle of competence, your circle of competence gets a lot tighter when you own it outright. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be, uh, I think it's got to be in your hobbies, right? I think uh, fitness, sports, um, golf, which golf courses, no, because those are um, those are more like wineries. <laughs> those are more uh, uh, charities a lot of the time. They're not very profitable, but like driving rages, stuff like that. I think it's got to be something that you interact with in your daily life um, or have a hobby for. So I think anything sports, fitness, or golf for me would work um and i guess everyone sort of can understand restaurants and bars but those are really tough to run so that they're, they're they're a specialty thing that i think you have to most likely have a lot of experience in because there's so many nuances with those jobs 